Hey guys, this is Gemini. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to multitask using harassment and some of the mechanics that go behind doing that multitasking and some uh, little techniques that you can use as well to help practice because a lot of people I see notice that they um, they can't really multitask very well and they are pushed away from doing it just because it loses them games and stuff like that. They, a common complaint usually is that like they can't multitask because their money gets too high, they lose the game because of it, they don't want to lose those games, um, and they believe that builds that require multitasking like uh, DT drops or Phoenix openers and stuff like that, they believe that they're useless to them because they basically lose in the game because they end up mac like slipping on macro and stuff like that so they don't actually like doing it. Um, and I'm just kind of here to dispel that myth a little bit and try to help people learn how to actually multitask effectively and um, some ways to practice that so that way you can hopefully get a little bit better in your gameplay. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple things in this video including some main points, some uh, d um, things describing exactly what multitasking is and stuff and also go over a couple extra techniques to do it. So I'll timestamp the video in the description if you want to just click to different certain uh, different points to make it a little bit easier for you so you don't have to watch the whole thing as it might be a little bit long. Um, so first off we're just going to talk about what multitasking is and exactly how you need to learn it. So multitasking uh, can only be learned and improved by straining it. You can't just be better at multitasking or think or just say I'm gonna multitask better and then you suddenly can multitask better. It's not like that. You have to continuously be straining it and trying it as much as possible to be able to do it because multitasking is entirely based upon muscle memory and knowing exactly what you need to be doing at any certain time. Calling multitasking uh, builds that use multitasking useless is extremely incorrect because everything needs to be done, everything needs to be learned by doing it. So basically you'd be calling any build useless by saying that it loses you games because you just can't do it and you're not used to it. So that's a bit of a random point that I won't really go too much into, but that's basically the the learning process behind anything. But for multitasking in general, uh, especially with harassment, it's extremely important that you know that it is entirely based on grinding muscle memory and knowing exactly what you need to be doing in between that muscle memory. So another important point is to remember that their multitasking is going to be as bad as yours, quote unquote bad. Just because you think that you're not doing damage doesn't mean that you actually aren't. They won't be gods at multitasking either, just like you aren't. So they can't defend everything perfectly without messing up. There's a lot of times where indirect damage occurs as a, re as a result of harassment, which causes them to do things like miss pylons or just mess up their build order, or they forget to put workers back on the line or in the gas or something like that, or they end up accidentally leaving something idle. Something happens where their their attention gets misdirected towards, towards whatever harassment that you're doing and distracts them from doing something else. As long as you do something that distracts them, you are doing harassment and your multitasking is proving some form of some f sort of beneficial gain. They will there's also times where just the idea of harassment in general will throw them off. If they have to constantly worry about the potential harass, it will make them distracted and think about that more instead of thinking about other things like building pylons or spending their money properly. So just the idea of harassment being on the map can mentally affect them and make them mess up, even though you're not actually doing anything at that point in time. So as long as you understand why you lose, why your harassment did not work, why certain benefits can happen as a result of just keeping a, a board prison or something on the map as long as you understand how the situation is meant to play out then you have a goal to reach and you know how to improve as long as you have something that you can physically see be like okay this is what i need to improve on i noticed this this is what i need to do then you have a good set goal to be able to aim for it so just because you're losing does not mean that the multitasking is being ineffective. You're going to lose naturally if you're trying to do new things. So losing equals improve. And that's what I always tell people. You need to lose to be able to improve. Always learn from all of your mistakes. And multitasking is no exception whatsoever. So now I'm going to go into the actual mechanics behind multitasking instead of just what exactly multitasking is. So 
the mechanics behind multitasking are time management. Multitasking is basically how much you can get away with while doing something else. In order to do this, you need to know what you need to do before harassing, you need to know how much attention is required while harassing, and then you need to know what you need to do immediately after you're done harassing. This ends up becoming this cycle where if you manage it well enough, the things that you do after harassment double as what you would do before harassment, so that way you can go back to harassment right away. There won't be any sort of time that delineates between what you're doing before and what you're doing after harassment because it'll all just become one continuous cycle that you can do once you get good at it. So what you need to do is if you don't know where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do before or after, you need to be able to plan that ahead. You'd be able to look at your build order, look at your situation, look at the game and be like, okay, what exactly do I need to be doing beforehand? Say I need to build this, I need to build four gateways, I need to put guys in gas, and I need to build a couple extra probes before I send my war prism across. Like as it's going across the map, I need to be doing those things. So make sure I can do those things by the time my war prism gets to the other side of the map. That way, I'm free to do whatever I want with the war prism once it gets there. And then after that, once I can do what, my little harassment or whatever, then I need to come back and be able to be doing things that I know I need to be doing. So you can't just be coming back and be like, oh crap, I don't know what to do. I have 2k minerals. I'm not sure what I need to be doing right now. You need to be able to know, okay, when I come back, my third base is going to be done. I can transfer workers over there. I have some extra money. I can make these gateways. I can make this unit. My mothership core needs to get moved over, etc., etc., etc. And then that becomes what you need to do before the next harassment. So then you can just war go ahead and go back right and cycle to the actual war prism and go back to doing uh, the harassment. So like I said before, multitasking is about building muscle memory and knowing what you should be doing at all times. You should not just be harassing at random times just for the sake of it. You want to be timing your harassment with downtime in your macro, your cooldowns, your money, or how your build lines up. You want to be sure that you can afford the time that is required to multitask. So you want to look at things like, are my warp gate cooldowns done? Do I have nothing that I need to actually build right now? Then you can harass until those things are up again. But if you have no probes being made, some warp gate cooldowns are up, you have some extra gates that are needed soon, this is not the time to be harassing. You want to make sure you do all those things first and then go into the harassment so then when the downtime of all those things building and the cooldowns coming back up is not being overlapped. You can do that to harass and then once you come back, everything will be back again and you can start doing all that again. You can start your warp gate cycles back up, your macro, uh, your money will start going high so you can afford some extra production or um, any buildings or whatnot and then so you can do those things. So there's this cycle where it's just like um, just like uh, the probes and pylons kind of thing. You want to be cycling through, uh, looking at your money, looking at the mini map, looking at your probe production, stuff like that. So you want to look at money, look at cooldowns, look at supply. Can you do anything with those? Do all of those things, then go harass in the downtime that happens because of that. Then come back, make some probes again, add units to the army hockey, look at your cooldowns again, see what can be warped in then go back to the harassment, then come back, look at the money again, look at the cooldowns, etc, 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 excuse me. Make this, make this cycle, so that way it's easy for you to remember what you should actually be doing. Ingrain it into your hands that it's like kind of like a two-way process. It's not just something that you're kind of just randomly throwing out there, because that's when it messes everyone up. You want to ingrain it into this cycle, so that way it's very easy for your hands to remember, easy for you to remember, and easy to break it down. So I mentioned before, you don't want to be harassing at random times. You want to time it with the downtime in your macro, your cooldowns, your money, and your build order. So to show this, I have an example of a DT drop that incorporates a an early drop while also doing the rest of your build order. So you need to coincide it with how you're doing other things. So when I go into the build, I look and look. The DT drop is going to be happening in a, in a little bit. The uh, more prism is just about to spawn, the dark shrine is about to finish, and I'll be warping in stuff at their side of the map. But on the way to there, my warp prism has a lot of travel time, so I can't really be doing anything waiting for that to happen. So I need to know that there are a couple things I need to be doing before the drop happens. I need to know how much I can do with the drop, and how much time it takes me to do that drop, and then I need to know what happens after that. So on the process to going to their side of the map, I have a couple things I need to be doing. At 5 minutes in the build order, I need to start my extra gases at my natural, and I need to start blinking to make sure it's being chrono boosted. Then, while my warp prism is almost to their, to their, to their side of the map, my, warp, uh, my dark shrine will be finishing, and I can warp into dark templar. And then I can start my harassment, and I know exactly how much time I can take doing that. 
Then after that, I know that I need to start immortal production. I need to get three centuries warped in once my next cooldown is up. And then at six minutes is when I need to drop down a lot of extra gateways. So I'll just go ahead and try to do that with, while talking as much as I can to exactly explain how exactly that works. So I'll unpause it. My war prism is about to finish. I can go ahead and send it across the map. My dark shrine is going to be finishing by the time it gets to the other side. At five minutes, I know I need to start my extra gases and I need to start blink and prime it. So then I can do that. I need to keep my warp gate cooldowns up because I know my dark shrine is about to finish in about three seconds. So now my warp prism is across the map. I can wait for this to be done. Warp in my T Dark Templar. Look at my money and look at my um, supply at the same time. Do that. Send it across over to drop. I notice my gas is finished, so I can go ahead and put this up in there. Go back to my warp prism. It's right back into the base. I can go ahead and do my drop. I know exactly how long it takes to do this. I can be making probes while doing this as well because I can cycle. Alright, cool. We did some harassment. Load it back up. Go home. So we need to make immortals. We need to do that. On our next warp, gown, uh, warp gate cooldowns, we can be doing the sentry, so I can have a little bit of downtime there. Oh, it just came up, so I can work on a sentry. Go back. I have a little bit more gas. Work on another sentry. And I gotta wait for those to come back up now, though. So then I can go back over here. And at six minutes, we said we need to do a lot of warp gates, so six minutes, warp some warp gates in. Go ahead, go back to the warp prism. Now we have some downtime again. We can do that. Check our warp gate cycles, see if we can warp anything else in. Do we need one more sentry? All right, our warp gate sentries or uh, warp gate cooldown is done. Come back to the warp prism now that that's over, and so forth and so forth. So that's just a small example of how you can incorporate harassment into an early build order, and it's obviously going to continue want to be trying to do that as much as possible but I'm also going to talk about how breaking down the harassment can help you learn it uh, in a much easier way. So before you just saw me using the warp prism pretty consistently there was a, never a time where I wasn't really looking at the warp prism other than coming back and doing the macro. This is a little bit difficult for people that are just starting to come into trying to do these types of styles. It's very difficult to continuously be going back and forth between their macro and their warp prism. I understand that. That's why breaking the harassment down can be extremely beneficial to you. So you'll notice that I did it multiple different times, I did multiple different drops, or moving the, the war prism around in multiple different locations. To make this easier for you, you can set different breakdown goals. So the first goal you can do, say, I only want to go ahead and drop once. Go ahead, do the drop, come back, and then you're done. Get that down, be able to do that drop and macro effect effectively behind it and then you should be good. Then you can go to the next step. Maybe say you want to do it two or three times. You want to do two different drops while also macroing efficiently uh, during that. So go ahead and try that. Get your macro up to a point where you can do both those things simultaneously while not slipping on your macro and your multitasking is improving and your multiple memory is improving. Get that, get that down, good. Then move up to the next step. Maybe you want to keep the war prism on the map the entire time. You never want that thing to come home. You always want to be actively moving it. Great, do that, get that macro down as well. Then you can go up into another level, split the DTs up in different areas and micro them individually or something like that. And that, get your macro down for that as well. And then all of a sudden you're back, you're all the way up to Masters GM level multitasking. So breaking the harassment down into multiple different things can definitely help improve it. And obviously this is just one situation. You can be doing this with say Phoenix harassment, Oracle harassment. Uh, just any other kind of war prism harassment, multiple army harassment, sent, like split your army up into different uh, locations and pull them up and pull them apart and pull the direction, uh, pull their attention apart. Many different things you can apply this to. This is just one example uh, trying to show you this in action. One other thing you can do to help train your multitasking is to try out this little multitask trainer map. It's a nice, nice little nifty tool to train your multitasking with a nice setup. Uh, simulation. You can set the difficulty as well. I'll just put it to medium to make it nice and simple. But basically, you have to be building an army nonstop um, to be able to kill off whatever army that's over here. Go along with your build order and whatnot. And then eventually a probe spawns. And you have to keep this probe alive against this circling. And you can and you can't actually shift click. Actually, one of the I used to be able to shift click, but it seems like you can't shift click anymore. Maybe it's a different difficulty. 
But basically, you can't shift click to make it a little bit easier. And you have to be going back and forth and doing your build order while doing this micro at the same time. And if you lose your probe a certain number of times, then you lose basically. So you gotta keep that thing alive non-stop while doing your build order, going back and forth, and this applies all of the things that I was talking talking about before, where you wanna be cycling in cooldowns into when you actually do this, when you do your multitasking. So I notice I have nothing to be doing really right now, I don't have anything to build. I can be waiting this entire time. So I can set that up. To be, um, I can be waiting to be doing something and I can just be focusing purely on the micro. Now that I notice I have almost 400 minerals, I can expand soon. So I'll do that. Come back and go ahead and keep, mi uh, keep microing. Put probes in gas. Oh, I took damage. Not very good. My multitasking is subpar. I notice I have uh, enough minerals. I can make a cyber core now. Go back and make a uh, gas geyser. It's very difficult to talk and do all this at the same time. I've never actually done that before. Now I need a pylon. All the time that I don't have to be doing anything, notice that I'm spending looking at this probe. There's nothing I need to actually be doing at home. Anytime it is, I just check to make sure that I, I know that I'm not supposed to be doing anything. And I just go right back to this probe. Oh, my gas finished, so I put guys in that. And then go right back to the probe. The rest of my warp gates a bit, or my cyber cores about to finish, so I can make stuff out of these. I don't have gas yet, so I'll have to wait a little bit until I can do that. And there we go. I'm do that. I, since I have the uh, hotkey, I don't even have to look away from it. Now this next is about to finish, so I can go over here, transfer workers, and get that going. Warp uh, militia correspond, get that hotkey to come back to the probe. Make sure everything's going okay. I have 100 gas, so I can make a robo. Oops, I missed. Uh, I changed my hockey. So now I have to start using a different hockey for this probe. Get used to that. Change these hockeys. Go back to this over here. Okay. I can make a, another thing right there. This is very difficult to talk with them. But you should get the idea, pretty much. Try to do this as much as possible while using your downtime to micro this program. Eventually what will happen is a Templar will spawn over here and you have to use a Warp Prism to save it. That's why I'm getting the, the Robo. Got some money so I can uh, go ahead and spend that. And then they're also going to send armies across the map as well. You have to defend against that. But basically... That's a very nifty tool to help train your multitasking, and definitely something that I highly encourage. It's just called the LO2D Multitask Trainer in the arcade. If you just search that, it should be popping up. It's version like 1.2 or something like that. Um, it's very easy to find. Uh, I'd highly suggest using this to help improve your multitasking. One other thing that you can do to help improve your multitasking is to try out this little drill that I learned from Day9 in one of his very old videos. Uh, I'm on Lost Temple just because it's a very easy, it's it's a simple to use this central location as a as a thing to move your probe around for this. So in this drill, you basically want to make sure you have some warp gates set up, you have some violence and stuff, you have basically a running base. And you want to have one probe, and you want to continuously circle this around this middle structure here. It's pretty similar to the to the last multitasker in your map. It's just a little bit more confined. You can focus on basically just one thing uh, and a variety of different options for this one thing instead of having to worry about doing their specific things like with the Templar and having armies always attacking you and stuff like that. So the point of this is to continuously keep this probe moving around this, this little structure without using shift clicks and then doing some form of command back at home. So say that would be Corona boosting a separate building, warping in, making pylons, something like that. Something that'll pull your attention away and come over here, that'll keep it away from the probe. And the goal is to be able to do that thing as quickly and efficiently as possible, and then going right back to microing the probe, so that way there's no downtime where this probe stops. And the point is, is that once you train your multitasking and your muscle memory to the 
height of being able to do any of these things in a matter of seconds, then you should be pretty much good to go for a lot of different things. So say I want to build some pylons. I need to be moving this probe around this structure nonstop. And say I just want to build a pylon. So it's very, it's pretty simple little command. So the uh, combination would be F2 for me to come back to the base that I want to build the pylon at. Select the worker, B, E, click, shift click back to the minerals, and then 2, 2, back to the probe. This should take literally less than a second to be able to do, if done effectively. So, mic going around, F2, click, come back, and this click the mineral, you saw that, and then come back to the mic in the probe. Go put that back there. Same, F1, come back. I moved to my uh, army instead of my probe. I was doing it on one before with the probe instead of two, so that's why I did that. Anyway, so that's one thing that you can do. Say something that you need to do is you need to make something out of this immort or out of this robo, say an immortal, and you need to chrono boost it. So keep this probe moving. Four four R chrono back to the probe. Very simple. These things should be taking literally less than a second to be able to do. Say I want to warp in, so go over here, warp in. Ooh, that probe stopped for a second. You saw that. I'm not very good, alright. Now I want to come back, put the things back in my hockey, move them a little bit, and come back over here. I can be constantly checking my warp gate cycles while this is happening. This is tapping. This is what Day9 went into very into a great amount of detail with. So continuously see when you can actually go back without having to look. Alright, my stuff's ready. Warp in. Move a little bit. I'm misclicking, you can see that. But that's okay. This is why we practice. Just continuously keep this thing moving around the, around the structure as much as possible while doing these simple actions. Doing this will heavily increase your multitasking and your muscle memory. When you can do these things in less than a second, it'll greatly help any sort of, any form of multitasking that you ever want to do, whether it be harassment, um, dealing with multiple different drops um, from another person, or just anything. Basically, this is muscle memory is the the key to all of this. And doing this kind of drill will easily improve those skills. So being able to do this stuff in a matter of seconds oops, is extremely, extremely important to do. You can in improve the difficulty like that. You can make a couple things at once, try to do multiple different things or go to like different bases or whatnot. Go over here, do that and, and that and then come back. See, I was stopping for a little bit. When you up the difficulty, you can up the amount of uh, shift clicks you can do as well. Don't do things, don't cheat and do like literally that so that it like cuts and goes all the way back around or something like that. Like be, like challenge yourself. Like if you have something that'll take a little bit more time, then give yourself like one potential shift click or something like that to give you just that a little bit of time. Because you can't really, there's some things that you can't possibly do in the time it takes for a probe to decelerate. So doing this is definitely a way that can also help you improve your multitasking ability. So to just sum up what we talked about, multitasking is a learning process. It is only learned by drilling muscle memory and knowing exactly what you need to do before you do it, while you're doing it, and after you're doing it, after you already do it. So you need to be able to drill these things into your mind. And a couple ways to do that are, like I said, you can break down how you do the harassment. You can make it into much easier bite-sized chunks to be able to do. Start out by doing one set of harassment with a build order and bring the art, bring the war prison back. Then step up to doing two or three different drops with it and then come, coming back. Then step up to keeping it on the map the entire time while macro etc. 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 You can do that uh, multitask trainer map. I highly suggest using that. Or you can try this little um, technique from day nine that uh, helped me when I was first learning this as well. So there's plenty of different things you can do to help learn multitasking. You should not be dissuaded from trying it just because it'll lose you games and it is difficult and you'll, your money will skyrocket. Those, those things will only improve if you actually actively try to do it. You have to strain your multitasking. You have to strain your muscle memory. This is the only way you can possibly learn how to do this effectively. And like I said, this can be used for any any type of harassment or any type of multitasking situation, Stargate, War Prism, Adept run buys, stuff like that, many different things that you can do. But basically, I, wanna, I wanted to tell everyone that the mechanics behind it, 
how it can be implemented and how and showing you a little bit of what I mean because a lot of times people explain things and they can't actually see what they're talking about so that was the main purpose of this video and I hope that I conveyed that in a nice and simple way so thanks for anyone for watching and I'll try to make some more videos like this in the future if you want to see those things if you can give me topics to go over that'd be great but for now this is the first one coming back into these kinds of videos. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.